Okay, let's check out questions 36 through 40. 40 is on the next slide from the New York State June 2016 Regents exam. All right, so we're starting with 36. It says, which statement describes the general trends in electronegativity and atomic radius as the elements in period 2 are considered in order from left to right? So I put the periodic table here. Here's period 2. It's the row. And I need to know what's going on with electronegativity and atomic radius. Well, it's not shown on the periodic table. I need to go to reference table S. So what am I dealing with? Lithium really through neon. And let me flip to it. Here they are. Again, lithium through neon. That's elements 3 through 10. Here's elements 3 through 10. Oop. And I'm looking for electronegativity. And you like that sound effect? And atomic radius. All right. So notice what happens in general to electronegativity. It's going up. What's happening to atomic radius? It's going down. Bring that back to the question. And so electronegativity, we said, was going up. So right away, it's not both increasing or decreasing. And boom, right away, it's not also 4. It has to be 3. Electronegativity increases. Atomic radius decreases. So it's really a skill in using reference table S or facts that you could have memorized. Let's go to 37. What is the percent composition by mass of nitrogen in, this is ammonium carbonate, and this is definitely a skill. This is a, a mathematical question. If we go to reference table T, that's our formulas, and here it is, percent by mass, mass of part over mass of whole. The part is all the mass of the nitrogen. The whole thing, of course, is the mass of the compound. If I go back, notice it gave me the mass of the whole compound. So percent is the part over the whole thing times 100. I know this is a multiple choice question, but I'd like you to write the uh, equation down or do it on the reference table T so you don't make any mistakes and bring it back to uh, the answer sheet. Okay, so the only tricky part here is you have to account for nitrogen twice because NH4 and then there's the parentheses 2. That 2 gets distributed. So I go to nitrogen. You can't really see it here, but nitrogen's mass is 14, but I have two of them, so it's going to be 28 over that gram formula mass with 96. They were nice enough to calculate it for us, but don't forget, times 100. And when you plug it in your calculator, you're going to get 29.2% as your answer. Let's take a look at 38. We have a balanced equation, and you're asked which type of chemical reaction does this represent. Well, look what I have. I have a compound and an element forming a compound and an element. That, of course, is single replacement, which, of course, is a definition. This was a skill, and I'm going to say this one was a skill. And then finally in 39, which formula represents a nonpolar molecule containing polar covalent bonds? I'm going to say that this is a fact. Nonpolar molecules can have all nonpolar bonds, like your diatomic molecules, which is H2 and N2, etc. Then, of course, you have polar covalent bonds and polar molecules, which include ammonia NH3 and water H2O, and there's my answer. I have polar bonds between the carbons and oxygens, but I have a symmetrical distribution, making it a non-polar molecule. So let's check out question 40. So we're told we have a reaction reaching equilibrium at 100 degrees. We're given the equation and this graph. So, the graph shows that the reaction is at equilibrium after 60 seconds, which is here, because the concentrations of both NO2 and N2O4, well, look what's happening. At that point, they're holding steady, which means they're constant. That's the answer. 
So, with equilibrium, there's a couple of facts that you want to always remember. The concentrations of your reactants and products at that point hold steady or are constant, and it's the rate of the forward reaction will equal the rate of the reverse. Shows up on every test. Keep working hard, and good luck.